Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, I'm Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. Rice, curry, meat, fish, papad, pickle, vegetables. Many, if not most of the meals that I had when I was growing up was what you'd consider to be a well-rounded meal. So that's spicy, salty, sweet, and bitter at some level. But as a teenager, I couldn't wait for dinner. I was ravenous by the time I got back from school at 4 p.m. I'd head to the pantry. I'd pick up my favorite noodles. Maggie Masala. Yes, Maggie Masala noodles. I'd boil the water, toss in the noodles, I'd put in the taste maker, and two minutes later, I'd be well on my way to satisfaction land. When you compare this with the meals that my mother used to make, which were more complex, which was the rice, curry, papa, pickles, vegetables, meat, fish, all that stuff, well, that's more nutritious, but often what you need is just something quick and effective, something that you can put together very quickly. And this is similar to what happens when you're building your website, when you're putting together a report. You want to attract clients, you want to give them some goodies, And in this series, we're going to look at three ways to do just that, to create a report seemingly overnight. We'll look at what you can do if you have some sort of connected content or even disconnected content or no content at all. It might not take two minutes, but what it will do is create a solid impact. That report will get the attention of your clients. So let's take a look at the three types of reports that you can put together. The first type of report is called a report that goes from C to A. The second report is a diverse, disconnected topic report. And the third is a one topic in many angles report. Let's start out with the first one, which is the report that goes from C to A. How do you make a delicious rice dish in under five minutes? Step one, you take a cup of cooked rice. Step two, in a frying pan, you pop a teaspoon of mustard seeds and some dry red chilies in oil. Then, in step three, you pour the mustard seeds and the red chilies over the rice and add one and a half cup of natural yogurt. Notice where you started. We didn't start with the cooked rice. Our goal was to make a delicious rice dish in under five minutes. And then we worked our way backwards, didn't we? We didn't go from A to B to C. Instead, we started with the goal in mind. And then we rewound the steps and it wasn't very difficult to get a very tasty result. When writing a report, it's easy to feel like you have to cover a lot of information. When I started writing marketing articles back in the year 2000, I had no idea what to write about. I'd read a book about positioning and then I'd borrow some of the ideas and I'd write my own version of positioning. Or I'd go to a meeting, and in the meeting, I'd be talking to someone about how they need to brand their product. And then I'd rush home, and I'd work my way through an article. Those were the early days. I was struggling just to get 500 words on a page. I wasn't worried about which articles got more attention than others. I was just keen to get the article out. Even so, it was hard to ignore how some articles, they got that spotlight. They got far greater views than others. One such article was about how to write headlines in three steps. Another winner seemed to be how to tell if your business card was too busy. So there were these couple of articles that were getting more attention than the others. And when I looked at them, they had three steps and three steps. and. So we had this bizarre idea to turn one of these articles into a report. It wasn't some major exercise. It was just, 
we're going to take all of this stuff and we're going to put it into a PDF file. Now we added some graphics, we made the report look all pretty, and then we put it on the website. Now this was an incentive to sign up to the newsletters. Even if you've never subscribed to the Psychotactics newsletter, you're likely to have seen and possibly read the report. And the reason why it works is because it's short, but more importantly, it starts with point C. And point C is that you're able to build a headline in a few minutes. So that's what it has. It has the goal firmly in mind. And then it walks you from point A to point B. And in a matter of eight to 10 pages, you're at point C. And this is very similar to how we made the yogurt rice, didn't we? We just had the rice, then we had the yogurt, we had those mustard seeds and oil, and we put it all together. In five minutes, we had a great tasting dish. A very similar thing applies when you're creating a document. You're not trying to create a complex document. All you're trying to do is get the client to a specific point. That point is a result. Clients want results. You, me, we all want results. But in our mind, a report somehow needs to be more weighty, more complex, more detailed. And it doesn't have to be so to be taken seriously. And yes, the big fancy reports, they get a lot of exposure, but it's also the quick wins that matter. A quick win is small and so much better for the client. So if I were to give you a recipe of a biryani, which is another rice dish, and it has 30 ingredients, you're not likely to make that dish, are you? And yet a five minute dash at yogurt rice, that couldn't go so terribly wrong, could it? And in the worst possible scenario, you'd probably waste five minutes and then you can build it up again. You can make that dish again. Having a simple report that starts at C and works its way backwards in about three steps is what makes it easy to create a ton of reports if you want to do it, that is. But why create a ton of reports? Let's say your site covers different topics or has different products, different services. Let's say, for instance, the psychotactic site and you get to that psychotactic site and you land on a page which is all about resistance. Now, would you be more likely to sign up if the report was on resistance or on a topic like consumption? And likewise, if you were reading about consumption and you wanted more information on consumption, would you be suddenly fascinated with the topic of resistance? So it pays to have a website with multiple pages and with multiple reports embedded in them. That way, when a client lands on a page about resistance, they read about resistance, they then find a report about resistance, it matches up with the article itself, it matches up with the topic, and then they sign up. Best of all, that report doesn't promise a ton of information, but instead it gives just three tiny steps to get the client to that result that they're looking for. Now, if you're wondering if you have to create a report for every page on your website, no, you don't. We have topics such as websites, article writing, consumption, uniqueness. And if you have even five or seven broad topics, you can create five or seven quick reports on each individual topic. But back to the headline report. That report itself has been responsible for getting tens of thousands of clients over the years. When I put up a figure on the website, I say it's been downloaded over 55,000 times, but that's being very conservative. That headline report has probably been downloaded over 100,000 times and possibly even a lot more. But what's important is that the report didn't take time to put together. And when you look back, it didn't even have much of a strategy. And this is the whole point about reports. Often it has nothing to do with you writing a report. Often it's just about writing an article. For instance, let me tell you a story about Simon Lamy. So Simon's a member of 5000 BC, and he did the article writing course. And after that, he wrote an article, and it was a very quiet time, but the article itself got picked up, and he got hired for a freelancing job. And so he's given this long testimonial about how the article writing course helped him, 
how he started out with positive comments on the article and then it went on to whole assignments. He's got like three or four and a half months worth of freelance work based on that one article. Now, the thing is that that article will sit out there on the internet and what Simon has to do is to turn that article into a report. Just that simple. Often you're just dealing with three steps, even as you're teaching something. Say you're teaching Photoshop, you're showing your clients how to get from A to C. You're showing them how to get there in two or three steps. You might have BlueTech, you might be selling BlueTech, and you're showing clients how to use BlueTech in two or three steps and possibly put up the smoke alarm. Now, any product or any service can be reduced to a specific subset, and then you can show the client how to get to that result quickly and consistently. And that can be made into your report. But try the yogurt rice. It takes five minutes, it takes three steps, and it would make a good report, that's for sure. A report doesn't have to be 20 pages or 25 pages. It can be 10 pages. It could be one page. The moment you've tried something, the moment you've got a result, you're hooked as a client. And so you as a producer, you as a creator of that report needs to look at it from the client's point of view as well. They want the result. They don't want more information. They want that result. So that's it. Start with C, go backwards to A, and now you've got a report. So this is a quick way to put together a report and clients love it. This is why clients sign up to the Psychotactics website or why they've signed up consistently. But that's only one way to write a report. What if you wanted some variety instead? What if you didn't want these three steps that you see all over the internet? Let's look at the second option where you have a report with content that's diverse. It's seemingly disconnected. Let's find out in this second section. Bring a plate. Sometimes when you go to a party in New Zealand, you're told to bring a plate. For anyone who's born here or has been here for a while, that expression isn't very odd. But you have no idea how many immigrants think that it's a crockery problem. They're under the impression that the host must have just a plate shortage and that bringing a plate along will help ease that dinnerware issue. But bring a plate means bring some food along because we're having a potluck party. And if there's anything that I detest when it comes to food, it's a potluck party. Barbecue chicken mingles with wontons and chickpeas with some tomato ketchup concoction. For me, it's a culinary nightmare. The textures, the colors, and especially the taste, they're a complete mishmash. But really, no one cares about me. They're having too much fun with their chickpeas and tomato ketchup. And sometimes being a little stuck up at a party is similar to being stuck up when you're creating a report. It's easy to believe that a report has to go from C to A or has to work with a single topic. In reality, reports can do just fine potluck style. We tried this in the membership site at 5000 BC. One of the perks at 5000 BC is something called the vanishing reports. At first, I was an absolute stickler about the reports. They all had to have a sequence. They all had to somehow take you from one point to the other, and that was that. And then I realized that that's hardly the way I read anything. For instance, I'm reading about the butterfly effect, the moons of Jupiter, creativity. That sounds pretty mishy-mashy. It sounds like, almost like tomato ketchup with chickpeas. But I realized that's the way I tend to read. So we trialed reports that had a combination of topics like pricing, conversion, starting up. So all of these topics together, they sit side by side and they don't connect in any way. And it worked. Sometimes a report will have this super duper ultra focus. Like take for example, report number 59, which is the magical time-saving powers of Evernote. We go into Evernote and we talk about Evernote and we talk about more about Evernote and how you should be using Evernote. Or report number six, which is three core steps to a viral campaign. 
But report number 60, Drawing for Success, or report number 45, which is Good Business Habits, it's a bit of a mishmash. It's a bit of potluck. And this revelation shouldn't have surprised me because, as I said, that's how I read. That's how a lot of people tend to read. A newspaper, for instance, is a bit of a mishmash, isn't it? A magazine, that's definitely all over the place. Blogs, podcasts, videos, they all seem to follow this mishmash, this slightly random pattern, and we don't blink an eye. What does this mean for you, however? It means that you may not have 10 articles on a single topic. You may have a yoga site, and you may have articles that might be about stretching, some may be about shavasana, some may be about what the client needs to do on a full moon night. And these are seemingly disconnected, but it still makes for a very good report. And better still, you don't need 10 articles, just three or four, maybe five articles will do. When you put an article into a PDF format, an article usually spans two or three pages. If you have the introduction, you have a bit of an epilogue. Now you're looking at 15 to 17 pages of content. Yes, there is a mishmash, but you can create a strong feeling of cohesion within the report. And there are two elements that create this cohesion, this connection. And the first point of focus is the title. If you're going to put together a bunch of unconnected pieces of content, then the title must somehow tie in all that content neatly together. Interestingly, you can go down that non-specific route when creating a title. For instance, how to create hidden magic in your business or good business habits. Those are pretty vague titles, but they're also titles that people want to read. And here I am at 4.30 a.m. I'm looking to my left and I see the titles of some books. And I see titles like The Non-Designer's Design Book by Robin Williams or Design It Yourself by Chuck Green or Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins. All of these books, on the face of it, might look incredibly focused. But you look inside the books and what you'll find is that they're actually a whole bunch of articles that have a workable title and one other element that is probably more important. In most of the books, and this applies to reports as well, there is a bridge between the chapters. Now, the second element isn't utterly critical, but it's nice to have. Notice when you're listening to the podcast how it connects from the first part to the second part. There's always that bridge in between. And then from the second part to the third part, there's a bridge in between. And if you look at the reports in Psychotactics of 5000 BC, you'll find that at the end of the article, there's a bridge between this article and the next article. Even in the books, there's a bridge between this chapter and the next chapter. It's not a lot of work, and it's the kind of thing that you should be doing. You should be building that bridge. So as you come to the end of your piece, in your report, build up the anticipation for the second piece. And as the second piece winds down, shine your light on the third piece, and, and so on. And a simple set of lines at the end of the content creates enough of glue to bind these seemingly random topics together. We're not talking about mixing auto repair and gardening in a report, but you get the point, don't you? This isn't to say I like potluck parties anymore. I've never liked them. I probably never will. But I do like potluck with my information. I do like it with my videos. I do like it with my reading. And that's how your clients operate as well. They might be food snobs, but when it comes to information, they assimilate all of this random information together. And this is what you can put in a report. So are we done yet? No, we're not done. We still have one more kind of report, which, as you might have guessed, is the most obvious one of all. It's a report that consists of a single topic. This seems pretty self-explanatory, doesn't it? Still, let's take a look at why this kind of report is much loved and how to go about creating it in a way that is pretty magical. So this takes us to the third part, which is one topic, but many angles.
On the 29th of March 1974, farmers in the Xi'an district of China, they stumbled on this treasure that was to rival the Great Wall of China. The farmers' real goal was to find water for their crops, and they stumbled on this beautifully sculpted head. The more they began to dig, the more they found hundreds and then thousands of soldiers, terracotta soldiers. This was the army of Jin Shu Huang, the first emperor of unified China. Over 8,000 terracotta warriors, cavalry, foot soldiers, archers, they were all to accompany the emperor into the afterlife. And these terracotta soldiers, they were created with moles, and they seem to have an early assembly line construction. And this is where the story gets really interesting, because most of the hands of the terracotta army appear identical. Yet when you look at their faces, when you look closer at every single soldier, he seems to have a completely unique facial feature. Everyone, it seems, comes from similar molds, but somehow got just a little tweaked to create a high level of uniqueness. When creating reports, a single mold, a single topic, it can be tweaked in dozens, possibly thousands of ways to create this unique report. Which is why a report on a single topic can be so powerful. The information that seems to come from one source suddenly creates a wealth of topics. These subtopics, they become very attractive to the reader. So what is being suggested here is that you can have a single topic and you can have dozens of subtopics. Each subtopic represents an article and several such articles become a fascinating report. And to get that one topic report going, all you have to do is first start with the topic and then add a whole bunch of subtopics. So let's take a topic like headlines for starters. What kind of subtopics could we generate? Let's make up a list. Testimonial headlines, how to get your clients to write your headlines, bottom-up headlines, how to use headlines as email signatures, keywords and headlines, how to avoid potluck headlines, why unclear topics lead to unfocused headlines, how to use the attraction factor of new and new when writing headlines, how to create intensely powerful headlines without using keywords. What you're experiencing is the creation of a terracotta army. I want to create these terracotta armies. So what I do is I leave my computer behind. I leave my internet connection behind. I go to the cafe. I sit there. I sit there for a couple of hours at least. And then I will brainstorm all of the subtopics under a specific topic. They don't have to be great headlines. They just have to be points. And eventually I have this army of subtopics under this one topic. But forget about headlines. Let's talk about Photoshop. And let's go deeper into Photoshop. Let's go into selections and layer masks in Photoshop. Are you ready? Let's run through the subtopics, or rather the sub-subtopics. Okay, so the topic is Photoshop. The subtopic is selections and layer masks. And here we go. Using the marquee and lasso tools, combining selections, converting a selection into a layer mask, using the quick selection tool, selecting soft edged objects using refine edge, touching up a layer mask with the brush tool. Now granted, all of the above topics might seem alien to you at this point, but you're getting the idea. The idea is that there is a topic and there are some subtopics and that's all you have to do. Any topic will quickly cascade into subtopics. And then you have this avalanche of subtopics. What's extremely exciting as you sit down to write a report is that you don't need this terracotta army of Jin Shu Huang. A report can be extremely powerful with just three or four articles. However, it's still a very good idea to go into caffeine land to brainstorm the topics and to get those topics and subtopics and sub subtopics. You might just use the bare minimum needed for a report but you can use the others to create more single focus reports in the future.
And all of this brainstorming has a wonderful series of side effects. When you sit down to brainstorm the topics and you brainstorm the subtopics, you realize that you know quite a lot and that you can write about several topics in detail. However, this very same brainstorming session may be a cause for intimidation. You might think, well, I don't know everything about Photoshop. I know just about selection layers and masks. And that's fine. And if you get more questions, you just go up and do some research and then you answer those questions. Not everyone knows everything about Photoshop. Not everyone knows everything about marketing or headlines or everything. The point is that the intimidation is just internal. It's not real. And yes, the intimidation may show up because you think, well, I'm going to write about this and they'll think I'm an expert in everything. No one thinks like that. They'll ask you questions. They'll expect you to do your research. You come back with the answers and that's that. And that's how you put together this one focused topic. Like for instance, I wrote this whole series on Evernote and by no means am I an expert in Evernote. So I learn and I teach and I learn and I teach and this learn and teach method is slower. However, we all are beginners at some point and having information to share is not going to be at our fingertips. In such a situation, you just use the learn and teach method. It's more tedious, but everyone has to go through the same method when they run into new material. Not knowing enough about a topic is pretty normal. But what's also normal is that a lot of people, they get intimidated. They intimidate themselves and then they give up. Now, if you're made of sterner stuff, you'll quickly realize that you can put together a report just by learning about the topic, trying it out yourself, and then tying it all together in a nice little PDF, or even a video or an audio report. Having a single topic is a great way to focus if you're creating new material. If you've already created material in the past, it's easier to find that material as well, collate it, and then you've got a report. For instance, if I needed to write a report about pricing or planning or productivity, it would be quite an easy task to just go through all the archives and find two or three or four or five articles on just one topic. And there you have it. You might have to slog a bit if you aren't familiar with the topic or the subtopics, but it's not an earth-shattering task. In fact, all of that stuff about layer masks, I know nothing about it. I got it from the lynda.com site. If I wanted to move deeper into the world of layer masks, I just have to access the site, which I do, and then about 43 minutes of learning later, I could probably teach it. Maybe I'd have to go over it several times, three times, four times, but then eventually I would be able to teach it, even if I were a complete newbie. If you've been creating content for a while, it's really a matter of collation, some tea and coffee drinking, and then you've got yourself a report that's pretty single-minded. It's not an army, but you don't need an army, do you? You don't even need a corps or division or brigade or regiment or battalion or company. Not even a platoon and not even a squad, but just a section, just three or four little foot soldiers will do the job just fine. Now that brings us to the end of how to create a report. It's time for the summary and the one thing. So what did we cover in this episode? We started out with the report that takes you from C to A. And the reason for this odd kind of C to A is simply that you determine the result and then you work your way backwards. So you're always looking at a result. And this is the kind of report that you simply cannot go wrong with. That's because people want a result. And it's not that hard to give a client a result. You just have to work out what is that result going to be and then work your way backwards from there, just like the yogurt rice. I know I mentioned it several times. You should try it. It's really delicious. So go from C to A. 10 pages, 5 pages, 1 page, doesn't really matter. Once you get the result for the client, they will love it. But the point is that even before the client opens up your report, they still can see that it's result-oriented. Mm -hmm. 
Is this the most attractive kind of report you can have on your website? No, maybe it's the second one. Maybe it's the disconnected kind of report where you have different things or different topics within that broad framework. So say it's marketing, but then you've got pricing, you've got something to do with confidence, something to do with structure, and you've got all of this stuff in a single report. And it's a bit like how we read, how we watch videos, how we do a lot of stuff. So the disconnected bit might be pretty good for a client and that's what they might choose. What's important is that your topic, you know, like how to build a business, and then you have all of these slightly disconnected things, but they're all falling under how to build a business. So that's the first thing in a disconnected report. And the second thing is that when you finish off one article and you're moving to the second article, you create some kind of bridge. And this creates a sense of cohesiveness to the entire report. Let's not forget the third kind of report, and that is that you have this topic and then multiple subtopics, maybe four or five subtopics. So we took that example of Photoshop and masking and stuff like that. So under masking, you had several subtopics. Now masking itself is a subtopic, so now we're going to sub-subtopics. And the way I would do this is always go to some place where you don't have an internet connection and just sit there and brainstorm. You'll be surprised how much you have in your head, even if you're just starting out. Once you get back, obviously you've got to either collate information that you've put in before, or you have to write the articles. But once you have this groundwork in place, you can then create a report. Now, all of this creation means that you have to have a lot of stuff in your head. But what if you're just starting out? And right at the start, I said, what if you don't have a report? What if you don't have the information? What if you are just starting out? Well, that's what I had to do when we started out in the year 2000. I had to read a book and then write my version of that book. And you think, well, that's plagiarism. That's not plagiarism. Plagiarism is when you copy something exactly. When you write your version of it, it's like a critique of that concept or your version of that concept. And that's kind of where many of the early articles came from. So if you read a book like, say, something like Positioning, then you get your own ideas, you put in your own examples, but at the very core, you've got two or three things from the book itself. And that enables you to put together a report when you don't have a report. And we had that situation as well, where we just started the site and we didn't know what to do. So we gave away scientific advertising by Claude Hopkins. It was a book written over 100 years ago. Very useful book to read even today, but it was out of its copyright zone. You could give it away. And for instance, we at Psychotactics, and I'm not saying you should take our stuff, but you can take somebody else's stuff because there are people all over the internet and they write a lot of good stuff and they are willing to allow you to put it together in a report or they'll even give you the report as long as you don't change anything in their report. So if you want to start out today, you don't have anything, well, that's the way to go. Then you build your own stuff and you go from there. But now you know, now you know exactly how to put a report together with these three things. The one thing that you can do today is to sit down and write down the topics and the subtopics. I think that would do you a whole lot of good. You would realize how much you knew. And if you didn't know that much, then say you went into Photoshop, you didn't know anything about Photoshop, you didn't know anything about masking. Now you know what you have to learn and you learn that stuff, then you teach it. It's a slower method, but hey, you've now educated yourself and you're starting to educate others. And there's nothing more beautiful than that. So that brings us to the end of this podcast. Let's find out what's happening in Psychotactics land. So 
So it was a bit of a stretch when we got back from vacation to just get back to work. It's always a stretch. You always have this vacation momentum for a while. But I've started reading and one of the authors that I'm really enjoying is Adam Grant. And he wrote originals. He has written Give and Take. And that's what I'm reading. Well, not really reading. I'm listening to it and I'm enjoying the audio version of it. Uh, especially the person who does the audio. Usually they are pretty boring. They have this uppity kind of voice. But this one's good. This one's really good if you like audio, which obviously you do if you're listening to the podcast. So Give and Take is a really good book. In terms of music, I have stumbled on this group called Gotan, like G-O-T-A-N, Gotan, if you want to call it. And it's the Gotan Project, and it's, I think, from Argentina. So it's all tango. And if you've got Spotify or Apple Music or Amazon Music, or even if you just want to buy the albums, their music is really cool. You can play it in the background, and it's it's jumpy. It's nice. I listen to it before I start recording a podcast. It just sets the mood for the podcast. And so that's it, the Gotan Project, G-O-T-A-N. On the course front, there's just the article writing course, which is on the 18th of September, which is not very far away. So that's a home study version. Earlier in this podcast, I had mentioned Simon Lamy and how he wrote that article that got a lot of response. And well, here's Simon himself telling you about the article writing course. He just finished it when it was last released and then now he's finished it he's written his article and here are his results so you can listen to him so it took me three months to do the article writing course it was an intense period and i learned an awful lot Uh, the great thing about the course was that it was taught in layers and it gave me a definite skill about how to write a high quality article in a very short amount of time so what i did after i'd actually finish the course was I decided that I need to get some more work for my freelance job. I needed some attention. So what I did was I approached an industry publication uh, called the APG and they're for a group of strategists based in the UK. And I offered to write one article and I did. And it was about how to survive your first 12 months as a freelancer. And immediately before it even got promoted, the APG, the website, told me that it had already got very high number of views and then they did promote it after that and they got loads more views I got hundreds of views when I promoted it on my LinkedIn I got about 10 or so collection requests which is really good for me I got a number of comments from other freelancers uh, saying how they empathise and really like the article and I also most importantly got an offer for an interview at one of the best ad agencies in the country and to work on a very high profile brand and that was a great piece of success for me so the course helped me write one article which made me land a job that is going to last me for a number of months. I mean it's insane when you think about it. After doing one course I wrote my first article and landed a really great job from it. Above all, it's showing me that clearly what I've got is a high quality skill that's going to last me for life. And really that's what we expect from Psychotactics, that you get results. You can also join us at 5000 BC. Now 5000 BC is a place where introverts meet, where we talk, where we discuss, and there's lots of information. But it's the pertinent questions that you ask and the answers that you get. Often I'll write whole articles just to respond to your questions. So... Join us in 5000 BC and you'll find that it's a great place to be. And that's me, Sean. This is a saying bye for now. Bye-bye.